All right, so it's, uh, it's just about 4.30, so I wanted to um, get started. I think people are going to roll in, um, and as they do, I thought now would be a good time to, um, first of all, thank the Open House New York uh, for putting this together in a you know, pretty surprising, ambitious way, and uh, you know, I, I believe all of you here, um, me as well, uh, really um, Wish we could be together uh, on the site right now. It's a beautiful day in New York, uh, but unfortunately uh, that's not the current state of things. Um, but I do appreciate you taking your Saturday afternoon to learn more about uh, a project we have been working on uh, for the last several years, um, the Under the K Bridge Park. And so uh, welcome. And I wanted to introduce uh, the folks who are here to walk us through the project. Uh, so my name is Katie Denny Horowitz. Um, I am the executive director of the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, based in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Uh, on my team, I have with me uh, Joe Vance, uh, who is an architect and a member of my board, uh, as well as one of my founders, um, and also Lynn Del Sol, who uh, is my communications and development manager and who put together a lot of the content uh, for this evening. Uh, so she's a brilliant designer. Um, and so uh, uh, my partners on the project. Uh, Adam Nicklin is from a Toronto-based uh, landscape architecture firm called Public Work, um, and we'll talk about uh, some of their past projects and, and Public Work's involvement as well, uh, uh, the firm that actually designed the park. Um, and our, our, our friendly civic-minded neighbor, uh, Lisa Bloodgood uh, from the Newtown Creek Alliance, um, which is a partner organization uh, um, for environmental education and advocacy specifically along the Newtown Creek. So I'll let you all introduce yourselves um, uh, in a moment, uh, but I wanted to uh, share my screen so we could get started. Um, uh, just with a little bit of context before we, uh, you know, go go down into the site. Um, for those of you joining us um, virtually, uh, feel free to use the Q and A. Uh, you know, we will be answering questions uh, toward the end of the presentation. But of course, if you have anything pressing, feel free to uh, to you know type away. Uh, let's see. Let's share this. And so the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, um, as I said, um, and just to reiterate also who's joining, myself, Joe, Lynn, Adam, and Lisa, uh, the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance started um, um, a little more than 15 years ago uh, when the neighborhood uh, was looking at redeveloping the waterfront. Um, part of the um, um, impetus for getting us together and as well as, as rethinking uh, the waterfront um, was, of course, to create access to the water as well as as much parkland as possible. Um, historically, we have been an underserved area in parkland, um, and my organization and our founders believed that, uh, you know, parks and open space are um, an essential asset to any urban environment um, for health and wellness, for recreation, for culture. Um, these are things we're seeing more than ever um, in the current environment. And so this is um, uh, an aerial view a few decades ago, um, prior to the rezoning in 2005, which allowed for development of the waterfront. And part of that rezoning created a, a, a large amount of new open space. Um, and my organization was created to work with the Parks Department um, on the creation and maintenance of parks and open spaces in the uh, Community Board 1 District of Brooklyn. So, um, you know, some of the waterfront uh, was in disrepair. Um, uh, and through uh, the last, uh, you know, 15, 16 years since that took place, um, we've been able to work on the reopening of McCarran Park Pool, uh, larger parks like Transmitter Park, and uh, the uh, creation and ongoing advocacy for Bushwick in the park. 
Um, we are the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance because we work with many partners along the way, um, smaller friends groups, many agencies, um, from the Department of Parks and Rec to the Department of Transportation um, and to city and state entities across the board. And so in thinking about the waterfront, uh, you know, we wanted to uh, really take a holistic approach to the area of North Brooklyn. You can see here there are um, a huge uh, number of opportunities or existing uh, parks and open spaces. Um, so we, you know, especially recently have been approaching uh, our work uh, really as an area wide uh, mission to be able to um, look at parks and open spaces more as a system, expanding our partnerships, again, just from the parks department to agencies like uh, transportation, uh, or even, you know, small businesses, um, and the um, uh, the under the Cambridge Park, which is a uh, state property underneath a bridge, is an example of uh, transforming an underutilized, uh, somewhat abandoned space uh, into a public amenity for our community. And so while we were, um, uh, you know, working on parks throughout North Brooklyn, you had simultaneously uh, the old Kosciuszko Bridge which is uh, a bridge that connects Brooklyn and Queens um, in disrepair. And so uh, Governor Cuomo uh, had announced that the old bridge was going to come down and a new bridge was going to be created. And so um, uh, this was actually the first bridge project in New York City since the Verrazano was, was built in the 60s. So it's a very big deal for the city, a very large infrastructure project. And the state DOT approached um, our organization um, to take a look at the space underneath the bridge. As you can see here, uh, there wasn't much going on. Uh, there was um, perhaps some garbage, some encroachment from businesses nearby, um, you know, perhaps some unseemly activity. And so, uh, with a new bridge approaching, that's something that uh, we all wanted to avoid. And uh, the best thing to do is to make it accessible to the public. So uh, with that in mind, uh, we brought the public to the site. And so this was a tour that took place, uh, I believe, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, back in 2017, uh, when the concept first came to uh, see what we could do to the site. And so, um, uh, we then continued talking to the public and asking them what they might want to actually do there. Um, what can you envision? What sort of things can you do? Um, you know, what sort of programs do you want to see? What sort of recreation would you like? Um, and at this point, we had engaged um, public work to formulate that design, which we presented to the public last summer. And so, uh, you know, that's sort of a very high level overview of uh, where we are now, which is uh, the bridge being complete. So this, when we unveiled the design was just over one year ago. And as everyone knows, a lot has happened in the last year. Um, uh, one thing we were able to do through it all was work with public work and city and state DOT um, to actually create uh, the park um, that uh, was presented. And so Adam uh, from Public Work is gonna go uh, into detail about the design. Um, and we're going to do a tour of the site itself, a virtual tour. Um, and Joe was uh, Joe Vance was very um, involved in this project and the negotiations with the with this uh, with the various entities from the beginning. And I wanted to hand it over to you to see if you had um, any additional uh, comments before we um, send it over to Adam. Uh, thanks, Katie. Yeah, obviously we could not be more thrilled um, that this park has happened. When we founded um, our organization in 2005, our intent was to help the city maintain parks, but we also wanted to expand parks wherever we could. Um, you know, that's so far been on a small level. We demapped uh, a portion of a street that bisected McCarran Parks and added parkland that way. Uh, we've helped uh, our community uh, advocate groups uh, campaign for new parkland. 
Um, and then this project came along and in one fell swoop, we added seven acres. Um, and absolutely, th this would not have happened without the dream of um, Christine Halavash, who was um, my co-chair with the Greenpoint Waterfront Association for Parks and Planning. That's the organization back in 99, where we started realizing how underserved our community was. Uh, uh, Senator Joe Lentall absolutely would not have happened without Joe. And then of course, uh, Governor Cuomo, who came up with a generous amount of funding and cracked the whip and got this park built in, in record time. Great. So. Um... I want to hand it over to Adam. Before we do, uh, I wanted to share a, a little video that we did um, uh, over the summer uh, that was a similar project with um, uh, uh, the Municipal Arts Society of a, of a sort of virtual tour um, that uh, Lynn on our team did. the bridge. How can we help improve the community? So we built a 30,000 square foot park on the Queen side that is going to be under construction. A seven acre park under the K. This will be a park that will feature exhibits, artwork, concerts, recreation, and other cultural events run by the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance. Okay, so um, thanks, Lynn, for putting that together. And um, I'm going to hand it over to Adam uh, with a note that the reason we were able to bring public work on board to begin with was because uh, we received uh, a wonderful grant from the Greenpoint uh, Community Environmental Fund, otherwise known as GSEF, uh, which is a, uh, a fund, uh, settlement fund uh, that is being administered by New York State uh, that supported environmental uh, projects here in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. So a huge thank you to GSEF, uh, without which uh, we wouldn't have been able to uh, formulate our initial concept. So um, with that, I will hand it over to Adam. We're really thrilled to be able to actually show you this park now. Um, we actually haven't been there. So um, this has only been made possible by modern technology and actually having the ability to have the DOT, the state DOT out on the site, actually administering the construction of the project. So if anyone from the DOT is listening right now, such as Jimmy or Donnie, then uh, we really appreciate your team's uh, abilities to be able to take what we'd imagined here and translate it into, into built work and for sharing, you know, constant videos and photos of the um, work in progress. Um, we really look forward to actually seeing it in person, but um, it's also pretty great that Lynn at the uh, North Brooklyn Parks managed to get some really, really phenomenal um, video using, uh, using a drone. So we'll be able to show you the view from over the top of um, 
over the top of the fence, which you currently can't get through. We'll start with the picture. This is the first time that uh, myself and my partner, Mark, first saw the site. And it's kind of incredible to us. This was just taken with kind of a left hand poked out of the window with the uh, airplane, because as you know, it's a flight path directly on the way to LaGuardia and with the surprising fact that the tens of thousands of people who doubtless pass this every day, either at this altitude or about 120 feet up in a vehicle passing over uh, the expressway, but so few people know that it's there, even as it is, as you see from this picture, just so close to um, Brooklyn and the downtown um, of Manhattan itself. So maybe next slide, please. So here's some of Mitch Waxman's amazing images, um, also of the NCA, I think. Uh, so we came to find this place in, um, in a completely dynamic new state where, you know, as you said, it's the first kind of major bridge construction project of most people's generation. So to arrive amongst all this kind of energy happening at the time was really pretty remarkable. Maybe next slide, please, Katie. So the first thing that strikes you here is what an incredible space it is. Like we had a project that we did in Toronto, also on an expressway. Um, and the first thing that you kind of realize in places like this is uh, these almost kind of cathedral-like ceilings. And you never usually get that close to a space like this. So the perception of being on top of it is so different from being below. Maybe next slide, please. As Joe said, Brooklyn's inherited a nearly seven acre treasure, a space unlike any other traditional park, under the K dreams of a collaborative space able to flourish in the unlikeliest of places that celebrates the resilience in nature of Brooklyn's diverse community culture. Next slide. And it's at the intersection of these four communities. And it was really neat because one of the uh, staff members who kind of led this from our end, Ben Matthews, um, he lived remarkably close to the site in Greenpoint just before he moved back to Toronto. And as a Torontonian, we kind of emphasize, we can empathize with Brooklyn. There's a certain kind of grittiness to the nature of Toronto, which, you know, we, it helps us relate a bit closer to Brooklyn than maybe we do Manhattan. Um, although, the physical distance from the site is kind of perceived as maybe further than it is away from Maspeth, Sunnyside, Greenpoint, or East Williamsburg. But the bridge and the kind of new conduit of the cycle and walkway is really going to change that and put it on people's map. Next slide. And of course, it's on the water. It's a waterfront site. So very rarely do you get a chance to tackle something like this. It's not the waterfront site that it was historically as a shoreline. And I guess the reason that it got the money to be able to analyze it was because it was heavily polluted. Um, but anytime you're next to water, you have a certain sense of optimism when you're working on the design and it opens up a new dimension to the experience of the place. Next slide, please. It's not that it's a new thing putting public realm uh, next to or underneath old infrastructure, but it's usually quite rare that that public space exists with active infrastructure or active highways. So, you know, other examples that people can think of, I don't even need to name them, are usually an after use for an industrial or um, an infrastructural use. Here, we're occupying the same space, we're underneath. Um, but rather than being one thing, like a market or, you know, um, a bikeway, such as the examples you see on top. We were really thinking of the um, projects that inspired those, either ones here or, or um, in New York or abroad, which can be many things to many people. So it seemed to be kind of key to be fast as a project, but you should always find something new here. Next slide, please. So with that, Right at the start of a project, we wrote this kind of manifesto in the culture of Brooklyn. We think we sense a burgeoning desire for a new breed of public space built more upon the creative capacity of the neighborhood rather than the recent mold of New York City's more glamorous public spaces, such as the High Line. So many of the memorable projects in Brooklyn were made organically, informally, even spontaneously. We anticipate a programmatically diverse, flexible and adaptive space that is more open-ended in terms of how it's conceived to evolve over time. 
could under McKay create a process place that is firmly rooted in the local culture unless in the perfection of a finished composition. Although the finished composition as it is now is really great and hopefully we can show you the drone footage. Next slide. This is the framework. So this is what we'd unveiled with Katie and Joe and all of you back in um, the summer of 2019, which seems like a lifetime ago now, although so much has happened. Uh, and we're going to explain it a little bit as we kind of flip through the slides. So next slide, please. It's built around these things. So, you know, you have under here these 17 protagonists of these almost like staple like we call them bents in um in the toronto context essentially the supporting columns they're really high here as well because your bridge has to climb all the way over the creek and give clearance to um, vessels underneath so you end up with this kind of incredible space this gallery underneath which you can ever think of as all one thing or a series of rooms divided up between the columns and also this beautiful curve next slide which reveals i guess happenstance such as i, I think it was probably because you know you'd already built or had um, the original bridge in place which is sorely missed but because you had that and then built an extra um, number of lanes while the bridge was active you ended up with what we called fancifully the solar slice. So this gap in between where you get these amazing views up towards the supporting structure. And also if you flip to the next slide, please, Katie. We were really intrigued when we got there that people always think of these kind of places as really shady. Um, and there is shade. And sometimes it's actually really welcome because urban places, they not only get cool, but they also get exceptionally hot. So heat island is an issue but we noticed how as we were there for any period of time the sunlight tracked through uh, this space through what we were calling the solar slice so we tried to map that and understand how these kind of curvatures and flows would be experienced throughout the day and how that could affect the program and also the design it really inspired us next slide please and the other thing that really struck us when we arrived was that because of a location with, you know, on the one side looking kind of more northwards, we had amazing views of a Manhattan skyline, especially when you were slightly elevated. And you'll see how that was built into the design to leverage that. Um, but also, as you turn more to the south and looked along the creek or over the lower rooftops of the kind of more industrial areas of Brooklyn, but you had this kind of open sky and environment aspect to the place, which we really wanted to play up in the design. And we don't mean environment in terms of the idealistic kind of um, nature, but a really urban one, like a pioneering, um, a, a, an environment fighting to be. Next slide. With that in mind, and, and hopefully it will come across with some of the images you see, we wanted to kind of reinforce and amplify that. So on the south side, we wanted to introduce a surprising amount of green, which is going to take time to develop. So we start now, we start early, but then on the skyline of um, the Manhattan side, we wanted to really kind of tackle a very urban nature and make this a very experimental place, very vibrant and very raw. Next slide, please. So here's the framework. We're going to break it down into four different um, zones so that you'll see how they kind of fit together and the purpose of each one with the notion that it all feels like one seamless space. And also, you know, hopefully eventually this will kind of spread over to um, the queen side so that it really feels like this is one thing. Um, we're going to start next slide, please, with the arm. So this is the first point of contact that you have with, uh, with the experience of under K. Um, so as you come over, maybe the next slide, please. I didn't, so this is the first time we saw it. On your left, so that would be kind of more normally, uh, this is the building we call Big Blue, this massive four-story sturdy brick, bright blue building, which is a great orientation because you get a view of that pretty much by the time you're at the midpoint of the bridge. That's one of the most prominent things uh, in, your, um, in your view shed. You'll come down, as you see here on the right of the screen, uh, what's now a finished bike lane, I and mean, then you turn around and then there's the view of uh, columns and the suspension structure. And this luckily really surprisingly wide conduit down into the, into the main part of a park. Next slide. 
it's really important to get this bit right because as people kind of move into the space, it has to be safe and intuitive. This is where vehicles and pedestrians and bikes mix, but it also has to feel like it's a place as well. So a lot of design went into this in collaboration with the DOT to make sure that it felt vibrant, green and safe. Next slide. Some initial views of when it, the construction taking shape and here you can see, um, actually maybe we'll go to the next slide. Um, it's kind of neat how, you know, you get this moment where the, you have a solid wall of the bridge where we're hoping that some of this kind of greenery is going to start to creep up. You're looking at temporary lights because given the time it was um, built or the kind of schedule it was built on, we didn't have time to put the permanent lighting in, but it, you know, it was important to get that in place so that it's safe. Uh, and you can see on the right side, which is the south, this more kind of diverse planting and on the north side, um, that's a very kind of fine array of, um, of river birch, which uh, will get this kind of green filter into the industrial uses beyond. Uh, next slide, please. And then as you move down into and through the arm, you start to get these amazing views of the bridge, but also these kind of really curious neighbors that uh, on the kind of northern side, which make this kind of really curious and strangely beautiful backdrop of a park. Next slide, please. So Flex One, um, this is kind of the main heart of the park as you arrive, uh, probably in the future by bus down Stewart, uh, and the main kind of multi-use space, which is closest to a lot of the way the communities live. So it really has to be very community oriented. Next slide, please. So it's designed, again, you can see maybe from this to be very green on the south side, very urban and programmable on the north side. So that again, you can get those mix of two things. It's the space is predominantly a very open multi-sport uh, or kind of multi-use court, which is where the columns land in. And you can see that kind of light array of the solar slice, which as the day go by will creep through and wash the space in light. Next slide, please. Our notion here was to equip it for, for life. But again, with having these columns available to you, and we'll show you an example in a second of how we dealt that on a previous column, uh, on a previous project. But we wanted to really leverage the structure that we found. Next slide, please. So this is an example of a project we built recently in Toronto where it seems odd to ever put a vertical element in an environment like this. So we designed a series of rigging and clamps that we could project um, uh, lighting effects. All the lighting is actually off of the columns. This project's called the Bentway. Um, any signage again is off the columns. So we use what we found. And in, and in doing so, you, you draw people's eye to the structure itself and you help them appreciate what's already there. Next slide, please. So here in the future, we're imagining that, you know, Rigging and activations can be used for signage, wayfinding, identity, artist installations, and generally to, to kind of add another layer of um, richness to the park experience. So we look forward to that. Also, you know, such things as sound in the event spaces, again, always look to be able to use the columns uh, and, and, and to engage with the structure in a really honest and straightforward manner. Next slide, please. This is just an image we made early on to help you, you know, people at the open houses understand how we could span between uh, uh, the rigging and then use it for all kinds of things that we can imagine and obviously uh, many things that we, that we can't. And again, it's also a way of just helping people appreciate um, the kind of grandeur of the space. It's an exciting place to be in. Next slide, please. This is um, a view as if you were right at that level of um, the solar slice and looking back down into the space. In the background, in the middle of the picture, you can see the hill at Flex 2. And in the foreground below you, you can see how the columns are landing. So basically the storm water that comes off of the expressway comes down those columns. And then we built rain gardens to be able to intercept those at the base of the columns and then used the planting and uh, and soil to essentially filter the water before it goes into the creek. Now, to be fair, also, the, um, the DOT has a storm sector in place, which is a mechanical way of doing that. So we want to experiment with different balances of ecological and mechanical cleaning. Next slide, please. And then just dropping lower down, you'll see that the kind of arc of the main path follows 
the, uh, the geometry of the bridge itself. And on the right, the columns land in green space and planting, and on the left, they land in the multi-court. And then future phases will see us be able to kind of clamp and like kind of design attachments to um, the columns that land in the, in the multi-use space to be able to leverage better uses from them. Next slide, please. So here's you guys, the MBPA. You, you're, you're right at the point of, the, of where the columns land in the rain garden. Uh, and that's where some of the planting's literally just gone in and just starting to grow. Next slide, please. And then turning around the other way, you're seeing um, the, I, I can't believe how quickly they did this. Like the speed was incredible. Like the teams out there were exceptional. This was built in like a matter of weeks. So we found that there was a natural kind of drop of grade through the site, which allowed us to kind of hold up the court flat and then build these, um, really great um, kind of amphitheater seats for events that can happen in the main space. But also we know that like, you know, skateboards and kids are going to use them. So everything in here was reinforced to the same kind of level of robustness and resilience of the bridge itself. So you can even see the kind of details that although this isn't a skate park, we had to protect it against those kind of uses anticipating that, you know, we need to embrace them. Next slide, please. So flex two. Um, this is getting closer to the water side, which is at the bottom of the page. And if you go to the next slide, please, Katie. Again, so similar idea of like being super flexible, but we wanted here to really emphasize the sense of a height. Because you remember, you're coming off the abutment, which is further to the west, and the bridge is starting to rise. So all the time you're getting higher up with the structure and the, the ceiling just start to become this kind of incredible height. Here we were really excited by, maybe next slide please. You know, again, you're moving a little bit uh, further away from the proximity of residential areas and the waterfront. So there's a little bit less sensitivity in noise, but you're also not so close to the creek. But we could imagine, next slide please. We can imagine here that larger gatherings can be accommodated and then the topography of the site, both built and planted, can start to kind of make these sides and edges to the space, which give all different kinds of views into whatever's happening in there. And we wanted to make sure, next slide please, you know, it was, it was the kind of space that, it isn't just simply an event space. You're looking at, um, it's a really cool, Thing we have in Toronto in a former power generating station called the Hearn. Um, they do festivals in here where, you know, the sight line isn't perfect from every angle, but the simple joy of being in this uh, space, which is meant for entirely different reasons, and the drama of it is, is just kind of really palpable and exciting. So, you know, we saw here the same kind of potential in Flex 2 for these, you know, potential you know, more sizable events, but also for more intimate community gatherings. Next slide, please. We just wanted to test it. So, you know, trying to see what kind of capacity you have to use the space in a whole bunch of different ways, um, either using um, the hill as a seating element and a gathering element with a stage set up in the main space or the next slide, looking at whether, you know, the entire space could be given over to an event or or gathering and how all different aspects either flat or banked could contribute to that experience next slide please and also testing you know just everyday kind of things that could happen i mean a lot of these we can't imagine but always trying to find a balance of place making so like making a place that even one or two people could be comfortable in but flexibility so never letting one get too far ahead of the other next slide please one of the features you'll see when you go there is going to be uh, the hill. Um, this is built out of EPS foam, which is super light. The reason being that the geotechnical engineers um, determined that there was a danger of ex excess weight of if we'd built this hill entirely out of soil, but it might displace the footings, which obviously we wouldn't want to do. Um, so in record time, we managed to pull together a solution with the DOT that was um, just a fraction of the weight of the soil would have been to keep this feature in place. Next slide. So here you're cruising through Flex 2. On the left is the kind of main open flexible space, and on the right, is the green space and future 
place, we hope, of an event deck. The hill is just beyond. Next slide, please. Here's another one of Mitch's photos. Just showing actually that beautiful golden light and that quality of like deep shadow and sun, which urban dwellers kind of really understand and relate to. You can see it's fenced. And the good news is that all the fencing has been designed so that they can be rolled back to leave massive gaps in between. So um, most of the fencing rolls back into the planting and when open, it will feel really just that, very open to the public. Next slide, please. There it is at nice night. Next slide, please. Want to leave time for the video, so we'll go quick. And this is also a rain garden, by the way, and, it, and ultimately when the deck's in place, this will still function for water cleansing off of the highway. Next slide. It already has all kinds of life happening there, uh, including street racing. Kind of cool. Creekside. Next slide, please. So you're right now down by the water. This was the original design studies of what uh, we hoped it could be. Uh, you'll, you'll see here the two squares on your right. That's the footings of the original bridge that have been left in place. We think that's really cool. Um, but people can actually interact with the footings of the bridge we dearly miss. And then on the left, um, those are cutaways of the um, foundations of the new bridge landing down into what we hope will eventually be a very green and lush ecological project, but with also access to the water. Next slide. Those are those bridge uh, foundations, which offer, which is really cool, amazing views back up the creek and uh, Queens on your right and Manhattan in the foreground, dead ahead. Next slide. This shows how we'd imagine that the point at which the existing and, and uh, new columns kind of land down with each other is so exciting to us as a kind of a layer of, of old and new without losing the old completely. So we wanted to really celebrate that and also make sure that there was a message here about the health of the creek. So, and I think we managed to do some of that in the initial installation of the planting, but you know, this should feel green again. This should feel like a shoreline. And, and maybe hopefully in time become a, a real exemplar site for uh, the Newtown Creek Alliance. Next, next slide, please. Some images from during construction and just post showing some of the planting going in. Um, the NCA was really helpful in, in helping guide us towards the kind of species that could thrive and adapt here. The time meant that, or well, the time we actually had meant that, you know, we had to maybe riff around that list a little bit, but over time we know that the um, native species will really take hold and naturalize the site. On the top right is the amphitheater, which um, was already in the plans from the DOT, and they let us just widen it out a bit so that we could get more usable space. Next slide. Here's a view looking right back down and over the creek. And, you know, it kind of highlights that opportunity, but in the future, maybe we can even kind of take the access down even further and closer to the water. Next slide. And then and, and a reminder of the amazing neighbors. Like, you know, there's, there's no park like this in Brooklyn in terms of uh, the company it keeps. And that's what kind of makes it curiously exciting, strange and wonderful. Next slide. And then, you know, just some shots of the establishing greenery and then a reminder of um, the amazing dynamic lighting qualities of uh, the bridge and how nice it looks with a little green around it. Next slide. We were thinking that, you know, it would be a good place for smaller and more intimate gatherings, uh, you know, in Creekside. So we had tested that capacity with the... Um, with the amphitheater, the next slide. I, I mean, I guess this is intimate, but maybe a bit bigger than we'd imagined. Um, so, yeah, I think with that, if we can, yeah, I guess we'll just talk very briefly about the way forward. You know, best parks are never really done. They just keep evolving and uh, becoming better. And we see a lot of opportunity now that a lot of the base elements of paving and planting are in to talk about you know, future installations, a wayfinding signage and identity for the park to work with the neighbors around it for furnishings from maybe salvage 
you know, more replanting and supplementation, artist-led installations and revenue generating events to bring a lot of people to the park and spread the word about the park, more importantly. And then the next and um, last slide, I think, just shows that then it really is a canvas for more of these kind of rolling openings of um, all kinds of new elements which people can enjoy, not just next year, but the year after and the year after that. And that's it for me except for we'd love to, if possible, share any or all of the uh, amazing drone footage that, uh, that Lisa took. So the first one here, you're looking right over the, the expressway and the bridge towards the Queen's side. And just as you drop down, the first thing is you'll notice like when we were walking up and down this bridge, we'd just be kind of captivated by the neighbors and the kind of industry that we saw in there and really inspired by that and not wanting to completely hide it, but then also to give a really kind of green sweeping invitation. And again, you're looking at temporary lighting, um, but a really resourceful park, for instance, the blocks on the near side on the left here, they were left over from the amphitheater construction, so they use them. We use them as seating elements within um, the arm. And then the next video is gonna show us the main pathway, um, and again, off to the left, those are the salvage yards. You see those as you're like walking up from the bridge, you get vantages down. Uh, and then the kind of mixed planting on the right, and then the river birch grove on the left. And then the next sequence, just moving down a little lower along, uh, along here in the arm. Again, I think you start to get a sense of like the kind of mixed diverse planting and then on the right you're seeing a, a bioswale so all of the water coming down into the arm is draining off into uh, an ecological filter this will be further down the arm and you'll be starting now to kind of you can see how the bridge abutment is rising up and becoming uh, a real kind of canvas we hope to explore with you know future designs and also getting planting moving on it as well and then you start to get these amazing views of uh, the bridge structure itself. Then the next one, you're starting to move into flex one, you're crossing Stuart. This is probably if you're coming by bus where you'll be dropped off. The gates will be open, of course. And then here's the kind of main flex space and the amphitheater on your left. And then on the right is the rain garden. You can just start to peak the hill through the columns. The next one I think is gonna be in flex two. So now you've crossed the road and then the hill is on the right. It's just at this point starting to green up. It will probably take another spring to get really green. And then you're looking dead ahead. You're seeing the bridge landing down on the Queen's side. And you're seeing the kind of green splash of Creekside. Creekside is what we hope will be the kind of the greenest, most ecological part of a project. So now you're flying over Creekside. Actually, the poles, which are temporary, do give you an idea of how, you know, you can kind of imagine the rigging lifted up and being a canvas for putting lighting and kind of sound and, and installations. And then here you're just getting that amazing view over the greenery of the cemetery and the creek. Here we're starting on the creek. You're orienting yourself. You're looking west now and just moving back over Creekside. You can see the hill here. Um, just on the left of flex two, gives you a sense of the scale of the space. And then on the right is waste management. So again, now you're backing out, you're looking at the smaller one of the amphitheaters. These, you're just crossing over now where the original bridge footings are and the DOT already had ideas about making them viewing platforms, which was completely consistent with what we wanted to do. I mean, you can see even just now, on the left of your picture where we're trying to establish a real green foot to the new bridge structure. It's gonna take time, but it'll be worth it. We, the next one I, I, I wanted to show, it just kind of gives you a, an idea of the really curious setting and, of the park, you know, with these strange neighbors that you don't usually have around a park, but the importance of maybe recognizing that in, in the design ethos and you know expanding the notion of community from residents but also uh, business and industry and then the last one 
This is back over towards Flex 1 and 2. This is our favorite video, thank you, Lynn, of rising out of a space through the solar slice. Again, it's that wonderful moment when you realize that this is the last place you would have ever imagined to park, and then coming back down into the space itself with the rain garden, the storm garden on the right. You can see now the curve of the spaces that follows the curve of the bridge and the hill in the background just starting to green up in flex two. Great. I'm so glad that worked. So. Me too. Thank, Thank you, you, Adam. Thank you. Uh, although Thanks you didn't everyone. mention the bird flying toward the end of that last one, uh, which is also a, um, you know, a key to uh, some of the, the nature. Um, and we've noticed a couple yeah. of falcons have uh, started to you call know. Creekside their home. So, um, so certainly, um, you know, it is beginning uh, to create a new habitat on the waterfront. Um, and so again, thank you, Adam. And that's a really good segue to Lisa and your role as a partner from the Newtown Creek Alliance. And I was hoping you could talk a little bit about uh, the work you've been doing and how this project um, has some potential with your uh, master plan and work. Absolutely. I love it that the bird was my, my segue. <laughs> so thank you for that. Well timed. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Adam. That was a great presentation. I really love those drones. Um, so yeah, so I'm Lisa Bloodgood. I'm Director of Advocacy and Education with Newtown Creek Alliance. and. You know, there are a lot of things that are really interesting and exciting about this park in particular. Um, one, I have to start off with saying that it's, it's refreshing to have a brand new park developed that is not tied to the development of luxury housing anywhere in the neighborhood, which is a big deal uh, and something pretty different. So um, that's, I think, the first thing. Um, and, and Adam, you kept talking about all of the interesting neighbors. All those interesting neighbors are primarily waste transfer stations and it's, it's really moving the garbage and wastes from our neighborhoods through the neighborhoods and out again, um, which is, it certainly does make for interesting neighbors. But we always like to use interesting neighbors as learning opportunities. And so, you know, it's really very nice when you can point to the neighbors and say, this is part of the journey of our wastes. And, and so that is one thing that we do like to talk about because so much of that is concentrated around the creek. Um, but yeah, so, so this park space um, is incredible to us in particular because it is a new opportunity for accessing a waterway that has been removed from the community and kind of even the collective conscious of the community for a very, very long time centuries even. Um, I, I think development and industrialization of the waterway started in the earlier 1800s. And so now, almost 200 years later, we're, we're seeing changes in uses around the waterway that are um, exciting. And we also think that a park like this doesn't necessarily uh, take away from the industrial quality of the waterway, which is important to maintain that integrity. Um, and it's, it's also a space that, so it's a space that works with that industry, our industrial neighbors, but also is an opportunity to bring more members of the community to a waterway that they haven't been able to access in so long. And so it's the pairing of these two in this dynamic way that is very interesting and exciting, intriguing, and you know, how, what it's going to look like in the next couple of years is something that we're going to be paying close attention to um, and we'll be looking for opportunities for um, you know whether it's it's those conversations that are around waste um, or conversations around how ecology can function uh, and we can have healthy ecosystems in intensely, intensely uh, industrialized and urban areas um, and we also see this park as a connection to lots of other work that's happening, whether it's um, for public access, uh, not only to the shorelines, to the waters itself, 
but for ecological restoration in these um, kind of pocket ways. So if you were to look an aerial view at Newtown Creek from the East River to the Kosciuszko Bridge is about two miles, roughly. And so within the last couple of years, we've seen um, opportunities for accessing the waterway and the expansion of habitat for ecological purposes growing in these very small pocket, um, whether they're pocket parks, I mean, seven acres is not very small, but it is uh, a link in a chain of these smaller places that are coming online. And so we view this as um, not only pocket parks and, and access points for people, but um, pockets to connect, whether it's uh, pollinators from one uh, flowering meadowed area to another, or for migratory birds that we definitely know are coming through this area, um, and for a lot of the um, shoreline birds that also really enjoy that shoreline edged area where they can fish for some of the smaller um, smaller fish that are in the waterways now. I also kind of wanted to address, somebody had a question in the chat earlier about contamination in the area. And Katie, you touched on this in your introduction, talking about how the park itself and the designs and, and um, some of the funding for North Brooklyn Parks Alliance came through the GSEP settlement. Well, that was a settlement with ExxonMobil for um, the Greenpoint oil spill, which for those of you who maybe don't know about that, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, as much as 30 million gallons of oil that has seeped underneath about 50 acres of the Greenpoint community over the course of about 150 years. It wasn't one oil spill, and it wasn't even Exxon Mobil's when it started, but in 2007, there was a settlement that said $19.5 million goes to the Greenpoint community for environmental benefit projects, and then another sum, which I do not know, uh, will be spent on remediation and the cleanup of that oil spill. So that is one massive um, contaminated site that has been clean, you know, in process of remediation over the last uh, 20 plus years now. There was some cleanup that started before that settlement. Um, but there are, you know, hopefully most of you know that Newtown Creek is a federally designated Superfund site. We got that designation 10 years ago last month. Hooray, happy birthday, super fun site. Um, and we're still in the remedial investigation phase of that process, but we do anticipate that remediation will get underway within the next five years or so, which means we should see a cleaned up creek within the next 15 years. These things take a long time. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's just to say that, yes, this area has been contaminated for a very long time, but the processes for cleaning up are well underway. And um, many of the egregiously polluting industries have left a long time ago. And so, you know, Joe earlier mentioned um, an organization that he was a part of, Guap, uh, with Christine Holowatz, who is on our board and we love dearly. And um, they were instrumental in fighting against uh, um, an incinerator that was in the neighborhood, a power plant that wanted to move into the neighborhood. And so, um, yeah, many of those polluting industries are gone. There are still some, um, and there are certainly still a lot of truck traffic, which we still have to deal with in the neighborhood. But but there's been a shift, and there were also shifts in, in water quality in the creek itself due to um, improvements to the wastewater treatment plant around the corner. So there are all these different things that are happening that are 
resulting in a, in a cleaner environment. However, we do still have a very long way to go, but I think it's spaces like this um, and efforts like everybody that's on this panel now that it are critical in changing the trajectory of, of places like Newtown Creek and especially places under uh, you know heavily traveled roadways that without the inspiration and foresight of the folks on this panel uh, would be you know nothing like what we're seeing here today um, and I think just even looking at some of the slides I haven't seen in over a year now it's exciting to think that there would be a thousand people that would go and actually oh it's by Newtown Creek I now know what Newtown Creek is which I can't tell you how many times I've been in front of an audience and I ask people you know show of hands who has even ever heard of Newtown Creek and it's like crickets um, so the opportunities for engagement for education for ecology it's all very exciting and uh, you know, I, I can't wait to start doing some programming. Um, you know, we've talked about summer camps and educational environmental camps and, you know, to be determined what we're going to end up actually doing, but the opportunities are really exciting. Thank you, Lisa. I think, um, I think that's exactly right, that it is um you know a place for potential and opportunity and even in even in the current climate of um you know the the pandemic and um restrictions on uh events and and public gatherings uh you know this is a a wide open air space um where we hope to bring safe socially distant programming um uh, in a way that can be activated uh to protect people's health um, and they can continue to gather um, and, and be safe. And so, uh, you know, in the near term, uh, you know, we, we want to, you know, fully realize the park through activation um, as much as possible, given the, the health guidelines in New York City right now. Um, but then certainly in the future, we look at it as, um, you know, a place for education, recreation, culture, um, the, you know, horticultural exploration. And so, um, you know, so with that, we're really looking to the future and we could not be more excited that we're on our way there and that we got have gotten as far as we have, um, you know, given the challenges that we've all experienced over the last, uh, you know, eight months. So, um, so I wanted to thank you all and ask if anyone has uh, any final comments. Um, and also ask the participants uh, to uh, continue writing questions. And also this uh, for us marks the first of a fall panel series. So I wanted to um, share our um, uh, series, our future events. Um, so we have two coming up and one is November 12th, where we're gonna talk about Bushwick Inlet Park. And the next is December 8th, when we'll talk about uh, the concept of BQ Green, uh, which is the decking over of the BQE in the south side of Williamsburg. So we look forward to continue talking about some really innovative open space projects. And Joe, Lynn, Lisa, Adam, thank you for your time. And I hope everyone else enjoys the rest of your Saturday. Um, and have a good weekend. Thank you, Katie. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.